Welcome, Hello, everybody. Welcome, this Welcome to our discussion. <laughs> We're going to do that. We're just going to keep trying to talk <laughs> over each other. Okay. You guys. <laughs> just want to welcome everybody to the December Q&A. Um, as you come in, please put your name and what troop number you're from. And if you have anything fun and exciting planned for your troop for Christmas. Do you have anything fun and exciting planned for Christmas, Donna? Low key, you know, we're playing it low key. I'm just gonna make some good food, probably make my delicious apple crisp and uh, probably make a few extras and give them to some friends and make one for my daughter. Hi, Autumn. Autumn is an amazing baker. Oh, what's your favorite thing to make, Autumn? What's the big request? Ooh. Yes, Christmas baking. I have a few little uh, holiday humor uh, snippets for you. Why doesn't Santa Claus think of the past or the future? Hmm? Any guesses? Tina, any guesses why Santa does, doesn't think of the past or the future? Because he likes to live in the present. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Anything with kids helping. What are some good things that kids can do to help for the holidays? He thinks of presents. Good one. <laughs> He's always present. Yes. I think that reminds me to constantly remind me to be in the moment. With all stuff going on around us, it's sometimes we can get caught up in our mind about other stuff. If we just stop, take a deep breath and just look what's going on in the moment and just be present in the moment. It helps reduce the chaos and the noise. <laughs> Yes. Hi, Kristen. And yes, the presents. Sometimes the answers just come in a little bit slow. Mm. Yes, Norma, we will be going over a few of the most important details of cookie cells this year. And if you have questions, please put them in to the comments because Alicia will be here to answer those. Autumn likes baking with her girls. That's her favorite. Nice. What's your favorite thing to bake? My mom would always make those little, they look like little snowballs. Um, and then she would make the thumbprint cookies and she'd always put jelly in the middle of the thumbprint cookies and oof, they melt in your mouth. We always did the peanut butter and sugar in balls and then you dip them in chocolate, oh. call them Buckeye oh. balls. Oh. And wow. as I think back about it, I remember sitting on the kitchen floor, rolling them out. They probably had a lot of extra stuff in them of us little <laughs> kids rolling peanut butter balls and <laughs> dipping them in <laughs> chocolate, but they were yummy. So, <laughs> ooh, yes, peanut butter cookies with a kiss on top. Oh, those are great. What's another good one? Hmm. Well, my favorites, which I have on my desk, Ferrero Rocher candies. I don't have to bake them. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, okay, Norma's got to leave early. Okay. Norma, if you need, you can always come back and re-watch the Q&A. They stay on Facebook. You can watch all the old ones, and they're also on our YouTube page. If you're just joining us, please put your name and your troop number in the comments. We are talking about some of the things we like baking for the holidays. Hey, Courtney, do you know what Santa's favorite sport is? Oh my goodness, I am so bad at these <laughs> things. <laughs> Let's see if somebody put it in the comments. What is Santa's favorite sport? Fotina. Hi, Fotina. Janice. We can what probably. Is Santa's favorite sport. Okay, we got to hear the answer to this one and then we'll get started. Okay. Someone said reindeer games. That's kind of oh, close. That's cute. It's, yeah, it is. That the North Pole, the North Pole Vault. <laughs> what do you get when you cross a duck with Santa? A Christmas quacker. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. Praline. Do you want to get started? Ready? Let's get started. All right. Thank you for joining us on this evening. Welcome to Troop Supports QA. My name is Donna Vasquez. I'm a new membership coordinator. I started mid September, and um, I'm grateful to this woman here on the screen, sharing the screen, co-hosting with me, Courtney, because she was my mentor. She got me uh, sort of helping me with navigating through the systems and um, learning how to do the job. All right, so today's agenda, we're going to go ahead and uh, recap last month, which was actually October, not November. Uh, we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna have a guest speaker, Alicia Quilantan is gonna go over the cookie program. Uh, Caitlin Garman, our another staff member, is going to go over our virtual, no, volunteers. What is it? What does VS stand for? Volunteer Systems 2.0. Volunteer System 2.0. Acronyms, acronym soup. And we're going to go over the free gift of membership, which is so amazing and exciting. And we're gonna go over some forms that you need to submit and we're gonna do some shout outs, give you some reminders and then ask, answer some of your questions. So if we're ready to start the program, are we all ready? All we're right. ready. So, okay, so in October, we, uh, we covered uh, philanthropy, some do's and don'ts for what uh, you as a troop uh, should and should not do and how to go about um, receiving or being able to collaborate with other organizations with philanthropy in your community. Um, if you need to go back and review that, go back and look at our videos and for the month of October and you can see all of that information. And uh, we went over the blueprint for troops and also talked about the various locations that um, are available that where we wanted everyone to submit locations that they know that are available so that troops could have their indoor meetings now that it's getting cold. Um, and so out of that, we do have um, a list going. And if you have any questions, you can just call customer care and we will help you with finding a location for your troop to meet with COVID uh, safe rules and regulations that you get to follow. Um, the reason we skipped November was because we had a holiday. And so um, normally we have it on the third uh, week of the month. But since we've got all these holidays going on, we're doing sort of a November, December in the early part of this month. 
So I'd like to welcome our product program manager, uh, Alicia Quilantan. She is she has been extremely busy helping everybody get everything packaged and ready to go and training everybody on the cookie program. And so without further ado, let's hand it over to Alicia. Hey guys. I'm so happy to be here. You guys, this is my second one. So I was there for the <laughs> September one. Um, and I'm ready to talk about the Girl Scout cookie program. I do want to let you guys know we did our cookie um, training last week and the recording has been sent out. The slide deck has been sent out and it's going to be on our website. Hopefully by the end of this week, I put in a request to so check back on our website after Friday um, for those links. And we can probably also throw it here in the chat too um, in, a, in a little bit. Um, but I kind of want to talk to you guys about all the things to get your girls excited about for um, the cookie program. So we want to go on to the next slide here. Just want to go over our cookies. Um, we didn't get any new ones this year, so we have all of our favorites like the Samoas, the Thin Mints, the Tagalongs, the Dosey Dos, the Lemon Ups. And I want to hear what are your guys' favorite cookies? Which ones do you guys sell the most of? Um, so I'll look in the comments for those. I know my personal favorite is the Samoas. I can't get enough of them. I know I bought about five boxes last year and they were gone within like a couple days because I just can't get enough. Um, and um, my boyfriend loves the Tagalongs. So those are another one where he's always snacking on them, pulling them out of the freezer. Autumn agrees. Yes, she loves the Samoas. Kristen's a lover of the Tagalongs. Mm. I was telling everybody today that there's a recipe that I found on Little Brownie's uh, website with the do si -dos, where it's like a chicken Thai do -si -do recipe. So I'm going to try that this weekend and see if I can replicate it and if it's any good. So I'll keep you guys posted. <laughs> um, another, some Thin Mints. Thin Mints are a big seller. Love the s'mores. Mm, the s'mores in the oven and you heat them up. Those are delicious. All right, we're going to move on to the next slide here. And I want to go over what the five skills girls learn from the cookie program. Um, because that's what this is all about. It's what, what can the girls learn um, and how is this helping them out with their life skills? Um, so there's goal setting. Girls are out there setting a goal for themselves and their troop. And they're creating plans on their own on how they're going to reach those girls. So, or those goals. <laughs> um, but it's so important that girls are choosing an experience as a goal versus like a certain box number. So it helps motivate them and helps um, encourage customers to, if they're like, I'm buying cookie or I'm selling cookies because I want to go to camp. That's what I'm saving for. Um, so that's like a really big deal. There's the decision-making portion of it.
Hi everyone, we're just trying to get Alicia back on. Their internet crashed. So um I guess if you guys have any questions about cookies that you can start putting in the comments that as soon as Hey, we have Alicia back. Yay. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. I was. Uh... <laughs> no, you're good. The internet went out over here at the building. So um, that was, that was wild. All right. Um, I don't know okay, where it's I, all you. Yeah. I don't know where I got lost, but I'm going to go right back into decision-making here. So girls are out there deciding, you know, helping decide what their troop spends their money on, which furthers her critical thinking and problem solving skills. Um, there's money management. So they're out there taking the order from their customers. They're handling that money. They're practicing counting back cash. And that's like one of the most practical, valuable life skills and financial literacy there is out there. I know that helped me when I was a Girl Scout. Um, people skills. So you're out there talking to people. You're learning how to take that no um, and kind of just like putting yourself out there and um, helping with your self-esteem and um, helping with your confidence as well, too. And then business ethics. So they're being honest and um, responsible the entire step of the way of the program. So that's really exciting. Then we have our program materials. So we have badges and patches and pins that um, girls can earn throughout the program. And these are all available in our store. And I wanted to remind you guys of the um, family entrepreneur pin that GSUSA released last year. You guys can start earning year two. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of cool things going on around the cookie program that girls can be excited about. And um, they can also like learn all of these awesome things. So we wanna move on to the next slide is Girl Rewards. Um, so there's all kinds of fun things on here. Um, like some of my favorites that are on here is like the Meant to Achieve t-shirt. I think that's really cute. Um, I reached out to older girls this year um, and asked them kind of what their opinions were of some of these higher end rewards. So from the thousand plus packages, um, we came up with some pop, Back by popular demand were the Lagoon and Roaring Springs. Um, we're doing the zoo memberships. There's uh, Apple Watches, uh, a whitewater rafting trip. Those are all super cool and exciting. Um, so I'm hoping all the girls are also really excited about it as well. And we'll go to the next slide. We have our cookie dough, um, which is super popular. And this is this helps also with girls you know, reach, ask, setting their goal for an experience versus a box. So when they're earning their cookie dough, they can do so much with it. This is something where they can buy, um, they can buy their uniforms. They can use it towards camp. Um, they can do it towards like membership, use it towards membership uh, renewals, all the other program activities. Um, there's so much that girls can do with their cookie dough. Um, so Hopefully that that's something that they're using as part of their um, sales pitch, um, elevator pitch with their customers. All right, now we're gonna move on to our next slide, which is all of the cool cookie swag that they can get through the store. So there's the booth and sales uh, tools that you guys can find at the store, like your tablecloths, your cookie carts. There's a really cool new uh, money pouch design that's available, signs, buttons. These are all gonna help you with your booth sales. Um, and then there's like the fun wearables so that you can market your sale. So if you're going and walking around Albertsons with your cookie hoodie, um, people are gonna be asking, oh my gosh, do you sell cookies? Where can I get some? And that's just easy sales right there for you. Um, and just marketing you and your girls and things like that. So there's, we have hats like the Stay Sweet hat that I have on here, um, hoodies, t-shirts, earrings, cookie masks, all those fun things. So there's that as well. And then if you wanna move on to our next slide, I wanna go over um, our donation programs that we have available. So I love that the Girl Scouts has these donation programs, especially this time of the year. Um, especially after everything that happened this year too, um, just the fact that we're able to 
fill in that void and serve the people with Girl Scout cookies. That's like putting a little bit of sunshine in everybody's life. So we have two programs. We have the Cookies from the Heart, which is a council-wide donation program. Makes donations really easy. And all these boxes are taken to the Idaho food banks for you. And any girl who sells 15 or more boxes will receive that Cookies from the Heart patch that's featured on the slide. Um, and as a reminder, this kind of gets confusing throughout the season because it's like a virtual donation program because you never actually see the physical boxes of cookies. Um, but you are collecting the, that money for the donations. Then there's the second one, which is the gift of caring. So this is a troop donation program. So you guys can decide as a troop which organization you would like to donate to. And those boxes, you will have the physical ones and you will be going out to like the Idaho Youth Ranch or wherever you decide to go and donate to them personally that way. Um, so I love these programs and I hope you guys take advantage of these programs and asking your customers um, to help support you guys through uh, by donating cookies this way. And then my last slide, I just wanted to give out a special high five. Thank you to all of you. Uh, we couldn't do it without you guys. Um, and I'm looking forward to this cookie season and I hope you guys are too. So I will stick around for any questions you guys may have. Um, as a reminder, we do have the uh, um, cookie training slides and recording I believe we threw those in the comments on down there so you guys can catch us which will have more detail and information thank you alicia thank you so much i love that donation program too that's amazing it's really keep giving great. to the community yeah that's amazing all right um if you have any questions go ahead and enter them into the comments Okay, someone, Kristen is asking about booths. Do we yeah, want to so go I ahead and that answer Kristen that Kristen asked about booths. Yeah. Yeah, so right now we are planning for booths. Um, I will be giving more guidance throughout the cookie program. I go in depth on what they're going to sort, what I have planned out so far um, in the cookie training videos. So go ahead and watch those. There's some exciting information in there. Um, and I don't want to get, take up too much of this time talking about the technical logistics of all of it, but we are planning to have booths this year. Nice. Okay. Any other questions? Well, if you think of any others, Alicia's going to hang on till the end of the program, and we're going to go ahead and have her available to answer any more questions, okay? All right. So we can go ahead and move on to, I first want to ask you one, why do mummies like Christmas so much? They're into all the wrapping. How much did Santa pay for his sleigh? Nothing. It was on the house. All right. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> I'm corny. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, now we're going to go on to memberships. <laughs> we're now we're ready to welcome Caitlin Garmon. She has been a busy, busy woman. Oh, my God. Ever since I started uh, in mid-September, my goodness, she has uh, been furiously preparing us for this refresh of our system and uh, she's the membership database specialist and um, she's here to tell you all about the new wonderful system you're going to get to experience thank you donna and thank by you. the way i love your jokes um and i love courtney <laughs> as you tell your jokes um so <laughs> excuse me so we can get into some exciting news here our new refresh system um, I know cookies are hard to follow, so I'm gonna do my best here. Um, in the last couple of days, GSUSA has sent out an email to all members asking you to reset your password. The title of this email is log into the new MyGS system and reset your password. So pretty straightforward. Um, if you haven't seen that though, I would really encourage you to check your spam um, inbox just for that email. So that will allow you to reset your password and get into the new system. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. 
So I just want to go over a high level view of the new system, including what it looks like for new members registering, as well as your account experience and what your troops look like in the new system. Okay, next slide, please. And next slide. So the overall goal of the new system is to give you more control in selecting memberships, your troops, and your volunteer roles. So let's get into what a new member registration process looks like. Okay, next slide. So the new system has new pages, it has cleaner views, it has access to more information about both of your membership and your participation in, for your entire household, as well as your troops. Additionally, prospective members, when they log on, they can search for troops before they're even asked for any information or asked to create an account. Pretty much like other e-commerce websites you experience, such as Amazon. So let's walk through that process with a prospective member. Okay, next slide. So this is the home page, and you have four options when you land on the home page. The first is to join a troop. The second is to attend a Girl Scout event, um, and with the third and fourth being create a troop or volunteer. There is also a small link if you scroll down where you can just join as an adult member if you're not interested in volunteering at this time or registering your girls. Um, so when you click into one of those links, it will take you into more detail related to that type. So say you're looking for a STEM activity. If you go to search events, you'll be prompted to enter the type of event you want to search for. So we're actually going to go into more detail on what it looks like to search for troops. And the four main or the three main uh, filters that you start with is a radius from a zip code, a troop number, and a program level. So let's go to the next slide and see what that looks like. So after the initial search, um, this, I don't know if you can see that, but I will post these slides too. Um, the secondary search shows up with a map and all of those purple dots are troops that are open for girl activities. So all of the information is there. If you click on a purple dot, it includes the troop number, the council, the affiliation, which is really cool if you want to search for a troop by either a school or a church or um, some sort of other building activity, um, you can search that way, um, as well as the map view from the radius point. Um, there's also more information when you click on a troop. It comes up with the uh, troop details, uh, the current number of members, including both volunteer roles and uh, girl openings for that troop. So if you're a troop leader, it's going to be really important to get into the new system and update your information so that when new members are searching for troops, they can see all of the information right there. Okay, and there's also a really cool feature that I love. It, if you can see, you probably can't see it, but there's a little share button in that um, orange circle. Oh, it looks like the circle moved somehow. Um, but there's a share button uh, next to the troop where say you're on the phone with your friend and you find a troop that you wanna either volunteer for or you wanna um, register your girl for, you can send them that link to the troop so they know exactly which troop you join. I just think that's a cool feature. Okay, so moving on, uh, say we have an example person that has picked a troop and they're ready to join that troop. Uh, the system will now prompt them to create an account with just initial information. So this is just basically your phone number, your name, and your email. And once this is submitted, it will send an email out to that person. Okay. So next screen. Um, once that member selects that email and confirms that it's a valid email, they'll be prompted to finish the registration process. Um, an important note here is that all of that initial information will feed into this form so that you don't have to refill that out. Um, it will then ask for more additional information such as girl grade, school, birth date, um, all of the fun stuff that you need, and then um, as well as the adult information. And this um, can process multiple products within the same transaction. So say you want to register 
uh, your five girls and yourself and your husband or whoever, you can do that all within the same transaction. Okay, so now if we go to the next um, slide, this will be what the checkout process is. So really exciting, you can use uh, cookie credits in this system. Um, you can use your credit card and you can also request financial aid once you get to this step. And then once you submit the order, the payment will be processed. It will be automatically, you'll automatically be associated with the troops that you select and uh, affiliation will be created in the back end and you will get an email confirming that. So going to the next slide, that kind of just covers what we talked about with the sending the order confirmation via email. And the next slide. So the new requirement to create an account will it pretty much improve the overall member experience uh, so that you can log back in and follow up on missing information. Uh, and there's additionally, there's a button that says request help throughout the entire process so that we know where you're stuck in the process, we can go straight there and help you. So that was kind of the overview of registration and finding a troop. Now we're gonna look at what your new account looks like in the new system. Okay, so this is kind of the overview. Um, the important take home from the slide is that you can still access your MyGS account from the same link on our website. So if you go to our homepage, it'll still be under the horizontal bar at the very top where it says MyGS. You click on that, you can log into the new system. Additionally, if you did not get your email for some reason, and you just want a fast way to log in, you can click the forgot password and it should re resend that email out so that you can reset your password. But please let us know if you can't get in. Um, so next slide, we get to see what the My Account Navigation looks like. Okay, so if you can see this, um, there's a glimpse of the landing page that you'll see when you access first access your account. So this is pretty much a one-stop shop for managing your entire household. You can see all of the adults, all of the girls, all of the troops on one page. So you get a summary view of your household's memberships and your participations. So let's go into some more detail on that, which is the next slide. Thank you, Courtney, you're awesome. Okay, so the first area is the household summary. And this is a scrollable list of all the Girl Scout members in the household, including current and inactive members. So information you see here includes troop affiliations, participation type, and membership status for each member of the household. So for example, in this screen, Jane is the first entry in the list, and it shows that she is a volunteer for troops 177, 245, 365, and with an expiring membership. Sue's entry is the last item we see in the list, and that shows her DAISY membership in Troop 177, and that is inactive. Um, and then if we move down to Area 2, that's My Troops, that's your affiliation. That's the troop summary where you can see, where members can see where your basic information is on troops. And the last Area 3 is how you'll navigate in the new system. So it's a left menu column, and you can access more detailed views. Okay, so let's go a little further into that left menu column. We're gonna dive deeper into the My Household and My Troops tabs. Um, there's also a My uh, Profile, My Events, Contact Council, and a Logout tab. Those are pretty self-explanatory. I really encourage you to get in there and click all of the buttons that you can and try those links. Um, but for this uh, slide, we're just gonna go through the My Household and My Troops. So. Also in the new system, you can access MyGS through this. I'm not sure if you can see that, but you can access uh, GS Learn in the new system site. GS Learn, not MyGS. Um, so once we look a little bit deeper, you'll notice that my household and my troop are both starred. Um, we're gonna come back to those, but this is just a quick summary. So my events is a detailed view of the events that were listed in the event dashboard. This is where you can see more information about events that are coming up. For example, if it's uh, overnight at the museum, 
and you want to look at a packing list, you can find that there. For our council, we're going to be migrating that a little bit later, so you might not see that functionality just yet, but that's upcoming, so that's exciting. Okay, so next slide, let's dive a little bit deeper into the differences between my household and my troop tabs. So in summary, what the difference is, is that you would go to your household to see detailed information about your household members, and it provides limited information about the troops. If you want more details about troops, you go to my troop, and that shows you limited member information. So it's, it's kind of uh, explanatory, but you can also switch back and forth to see the details of those two items. So we can look closer at those in the next slide. Okay, so here's a closer look at what our primary caregiver, for example, Jane in this example, sees when she goes into the My Household tab. In area one, you can see full details for each member's participation and their membership status. Clicking the edit pencil, which is in the blue circle there, for any household member in the list expands the view and it will open a new window where you can select and update the information. So if you look at Jane's listing, we can see that her membership status is in renew, which is circled in gold there. And you can easily click on the box to begin the renewal process. Um, below Jane's membership status is a list of all the troops that she's affiliated with and her role. So for example, we can see that Jane is a troop leader for one troop and a parent supporter for another. Uh, if you look at the number two there for call out two, it's an illustration that as Jane scrolls through the list of her household members and she clicks on renew, all of the purchases are automatically added to a cart. So you can complete renewal processes for multiple members. Okay, let me find the next slide. Okay, perfect. So going to the next slide, I just wanna go over a couple of features really quick. Um, the change troop button here is very useful if you want to do either a council transfer or change your troop. So we can go into more detail about what that looks like. On the next slide, it's just going to prompt you uh, on the next slide. Thank you, Courtney. <laughs> um, it's just gonna ask you who is changing troops and what they're wanting to leave, what troop they're wanting to leave. And then when you click find troop, it'll take you into the same screen we saw earlier, the map system where you can find open troops and everything. Okay, and the other feature I wanna show you really quickly is assigning a caregiver. If you go to my household and you scroll all the way down, you can see this kind of golden box I've outlined here. Uh, you can add a caregiver for any girl that you have. Um, and if we go to the next slide, we'll see more detail on that. So this is really useful if you have a girl who's going to visit her grandmother in another state, but she still wants to participate for the summer, for example. And this is just going to prompt you for information and which girls you wanna apply this caregiver to. So that this caregiver can now access the account and see all of the membership cards, the event details, the troop details. Okay. So now we're gonna go into the My Troop tab. Um, and we can go to the next slide. Thanks. Okay, so back to our example person. Oh, sorry, Courtney, I went too far. <laughs> it's one slide back. There we go, perfect. Okay, so you'll notice in area one, the same left menu column that My Troops has expanded to show all of the troop affiliations for the household. Um, in area two, we're gonna highlight the list of all the individual troop affiliations for this household. And if you notice in area three, we can see that Jane is the troop leader for troop 245, the grade level of the troop. You can see that there are five girls, two adult members who memberships are about to expire. And uh, there are two girls and two adult openings in the troop. Additionally, you can see the specific openings for the volunteer roles in the troop. So for those two open adult roles, you can see that they need a cookie chair and a troop organizer. So if we go to the next slide, um, you can see that a view of what a troop leader will see. 
So the highlights here are the ability to review and edit troop details, which I really encourage you to do as we discussed before, because all of the members will, all of the prospective members can search for open troops and see these details. And this includes meeting time, the place, ability to meet, which might be difficult in these times, but um, the detailed breakdown of the existing troop members, including adults and girls, um, and including their membership status. Um, and just a little caveat, that's for you to see, not for other people to see that are searching for open troops. That's just the troop leader view. Okay. Oh, also, I almost forgot. Troop leaders will also be able to select and process member renewals in one large bulk transaction. It's very important. Okay, so next, next slide. This is the My Troop tab, the troop leader view, a closer look. Um, in the shaded area, you'll see meeting details for the troops, dates and time, and the program levels. You can also see the contact information for the troop team and other adults helping to support the troop in different roles, um, all front and center. Below are member details for each member in the troop. So like our primary caregiver, a troop leader can scroll through the list, check the members that need to be renewed, and complete the cart checkout process. So the gold circles, those are all areas where you can go in and edit. Okay, so going to the next slide, this is just an example of what it looks like to edit the meeting details. And once you fill in all of this, you can hit save and that'll update the entire system. So the control is all in your hands here. And if we go to the next slide, you can see, so this is uh, my inactive troop in the production. And you can see uh, new roles down here where you can go and add volunteers to those roles. And, and then you'll just, again, hit save once you add the right person to the right role. Okay, so I will look at the comments for questions and thank you guys so much for all that you do. We really appreciate you guys. So let me see, sorry. <laughs> I have a very small screen. I'm sorry, I was muted. Hi, okay, so we do have no, a few on questions. Uh, there is a question from Chris. Mm -hmm. You're gonna say so it, Corey? Kristen has said that she had checked it earlier today and what she found missing was the email addresses from her troop members. Okay, Christian, I will have to go in and check that. Um, so we are still migrating some items to the end of this week. I don't think that email should have already migrated over, but I will have to check that. And thank you for letting me know about that. Okay, all right. Was that the only question we had? I think so. Okay. And Kristen, I'm not sure. I'm you sure guys that can continue to enter questions into the comment box. It is definitely a user friendly system. And I love the idea that you can search an area by zip code and find what troops are there and see even in an area that's not your own area. I love that because I'm a visual person and I need to see that. So that's fabulous. All right. Should we Everybody go? We can continue to enter questions and questions. we will come back yes. to Caitlin at the end. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Caitlin. So with this gift of membership that is this amazing situation with all of this happening with our pandemic and everyone sort of having to pivot and use their agility and stopping, Girl Scouts stopped, reassessed and came up with this amazing gift of membership. And it even makes it even more important for all of you to go into the system and to uh, make sure that all of your information is up to date so that uh, anybody looking for a troop 
we'll be able to have accurate information. So uh, go in there, look and see what's being stated for your troop and um, welcome new girls into your, into your troop. And this amazing gift of membership is also for adults. And so we're giving out 250 free memberships to girls as well as 70 adult memberships. So if you have some uh, positions that are available and you may need to, um, you know, if you have a situation where you have somebody that you would like to become a volunteer and they seem interested, this might, you know, incentivize them to go ahead and sign up. So I highly recommend you promote this within your area. And we're doing a lot of uh, promotion in, on radio and social media and getting the word out as well as sending emails to everyone. Is there another slide? Um, and just, just a reminder, we're giving out, mm -hmm. we're giving 250 free memberships to girls and 70 free memberships to adults. I am so excited about this. I've, in my life, I have not seen this happen before. And it's such a good opportunity for those girls out there that maybe their parents had thought they didn't want to pay as much money and try it. And with everything going on right now, it may be hard for parents to come up with the money and what better way to get it out there than to give it to them for free. And girls need each other. The sisterhood is important right now. And with this free gift of membership comes, if you know somebody who needs to be part of it, they're really out there on their own and they really, you bring them into the fold, offer them the free membership, help your own numbers too, to increase your, your, your area with memberships and just know that we're here. If you know of anybody, you can refer them, you can um, reach out to them. Let as many people as you can know about this because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Earlier, I actually cried about it because I found it was very touching to me. We have a girl referral program. You can refer two girls and get a patch. You can, um, your troop will get a, a gift of membership reward as well if they, uh, the entire troop will actually get the patch. Um, you can join us for cookies, which is another reward. That is, um, can you explain that one a little bit, Courtney? Join us. I definitely can. I, can. I have the mm -hmm. descriptions of each of these. So the girl referrals, if you, if one of the girls in in your troop refers two girls through, there's an online form that has been updated for those who noticed that it was sending you to the wrong form. It now sends you to the correct form. If you refer two girls with their names and emails, you will get a patch. If your troop joins, has two new girls join, every girl in your troop will get a patch. If your troop adds three plus girls. This is called our join us for cookies reward. The um, before January 15th, we will have a special Girl Scout cookie package that includes a cookie costume, $25 store credit, tablecloth, money bag, and the can and, and a contactless card reader from Cheddar up. This is amazing. I don't know why every troop wouldn't want to add three new girls. That's, it's just huge. We also have a drawing for the for a giant Girl Scout cookie booth waiver drawing. It's one of those big floaty things in the air. That, <laughs> and it's a Girl Scout. Super cute. It would be it would draw so many people into your your cookie booth if when you're selling. And for every service unit that starts a troop that includes 
two adults and five girls, the service unit will get a hundred dollar bonus up to three hundred dollars. Wow. So this is huge. This is one of the biggest um, campaigns and incentive programs I have seen us do. And I'm super excited about it. Wow. And that so we want to ask you any way they want. Do you have any plans? Do you have any plans on sharing the gift of membership within your service unit? We would love to hear in your comments, in the comments. Um, one of my service unit managers said that she was going to go ahead and um, put a blurb in the elementary school newsletter that's going to go out to the parents. And so that way the word will get out to the whole entire school. So that was a good idea. Yes, and we also have we we have flyers that are ready to just be printed off and handed out. We have social media posts that you just need to copy and post on your social media. But if any other leaders have amazing ideas, I would love to hear it. We've had taking, I have heard from a leader, bringing it to your troop meeting and at the troop meeting have all of your girls come up with the two friends to refer. Oh, wow. And then by sitting and so. doing this interview, they've earned a badge. Nice. In the uh, comments, Autumn has recently changed schools. Schools, yeah, and she's already recruited four girls. Wow, wow, and assuming <laughs> that's amazing. Barbara. And Barbara could probably sell anything to anybody. She, <laughs> she likes to talk and is very, very sweet. Oh, nice. All right. What do you call so, an elf wearing earmuffs? Oh, Shelby. Anything you want. <laughs> oh, I can't hear you. This was actually Anything Shelby. You because he can't hear you. Okay. Oh, Shelby. So it was Shelby. And and my story with Shelby is Shelby was terrified of me for the first two years, two, three, till she was two or three years old, just terrified of me. And now she just runs up to me and holds my hand and she, oh, sweet. Autumn's got the cutest girls. Oh, wow. She says she says she can smell so, snow in winter. <laughs> yeah, we could. That's a good one. Oh. And Shelby's just cute, so she could sell anything. Nice. I can't wait till Gemma's out there. Nice. Okay, move on to our shout outs. Okay. So our, sorry, I forgot that I was doing the first shout out. Our yes. first shout out is <laughs> Stephanie Jones. Stephanie Jones is the troop leader for troop 272 and 273. And she is the service unit event coordinator. I Stephanie was one of my first leaders I got to have, take part with and do things with. So she's kind of got a special place with me. Um, she's helped to coordinate the Halloween drive through trick or treat at Freeman Park this year. She's also helped families in need over Thanksgiving by collecting goods from troops to make baskets and hand out to the families. She is also coordinating in the service, coordinating in the service unit troops, getting them to help kids that are being placed in foster care. She is amazing at setting up events and making sure that there's continuously an event. One of my favorite Girl Scout events I've been to was one of her cupcake wars where we got to go judge 
cupcakes by all the girls. <laughs> and it was just an amazing event. Stephanie is amazing. Nice. nice. Well, I have Samantha Barnes. Shout out to Samantha. She's our tech guru. Um, we had a service unit meeting and she saved the day. She's a super volunteer who is actually a school teacher. Um, she's been a lifetime member of uh, Girl Scouts and um, she is teaching fourth grade at Riverstone International School. And so my heart goes out to you. You are doing probably some virtual um, teaching, which has, can be challenging. And uh, I just want to say thank you for all of your assistance. And um, Samantha's mom is Teresa Barnes, who actually is helping us quite a bit as well. So thank you. And then the other person I'd like to shout out to is Denise Critchlow. And Cr she's also uh, a lifetime member who has had her girls through Girl Scouts, her grandkids through Girl Scouts, and now she's empty nest is all the way through and she's still helping Girl Scouts. She's our service unit manager. And um, she's just really a trooper. <laughs> she's just, she keeps on going. <laughs> so thank you so much. And we'd love our shout outs. If there's anybody you would like to shout out, please email us at customer care. And we would love to get shout outs out there from you guys. Yes, let us know who's doing something that is worth mentioning. Um, just want to remind you um, that the cookie program trainings have already been recorded. So if you missed the December, there were three trainings. You can go in and uh, check them out. What's the specific place where they can find the training? Is it on our? Is it on our Facebook? Is it? Is it on our website? Where do they find them, Courtney? I am thinking it's on our website, but that will be an amazing question to ask. Mm -hmm. Alicia. Alicia. Back on. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you get your cookie managers to sign the form and submit those so that we can go ahead and get them into the program. And they are the go-to person for your troop. Um, make sure you go in and log into MyGS and update your troop info because, you know, you're going to have people looking in on you now. So you want to make sure everything's accurate. And that way you can share the free gift of membership and have people go in and sign up and welcome them into your troop. And our next uh, monthly Q&A will, normally they're on the fourth Wednesday of every month, but uh, the next one will be Janu in January. And so um, they're from 7 to 8 p.m. And so we'll be back on our regular fourth Wednesday of the month in January. This is your last chance to ask Alicia and Caitlin any questions. Please make the comments. We can invite Alicia and Kate question back in. And mm -hmm. I really quickly wanted to address that question about where the video and the slides are going to be. So that's going to be on our website um, after Friday the 11th. So it's upcoming Friday. And it'll be under the cookie section under resources. And there'll be a link to both all three of the videos. So we did eBuddy training, there was the troop cookie manager training, and then there was the service unit manager training. And the slides for those will be available as well. So you guys can follow along on your own. Great question. And I would like to address Christian's question from earlier about troop uh, member details. If you click edit details, you can see more information about um, their emails, and their phones. A lot of girls do not have emails, so you might notice that in the new system as they did not migrate over with their parents' emails. But however, all of the volunteer information is in there under the edits section. Uh, if we don't have any questions coming in, we do suggest that if you think of them after, please 
email us at customer care. Oh, Kristen, I did, but the field was blank for all my families. None of the parents' emails are in for my trip. Kristen, I'd really encourage you to open a case with me and I can check in it in the back end for you. So to do that, just email your question to customer care and it will get sent to Caitlin. Nice. So we, we want to, one more slide of our thank yous. We want to do a yes. super thank you to our guests. Alicia and Our Caitlin. Hard working. <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies. And Thank you so much. And especially, we especially want to thank Jess. She sits in the background and she is not seen, but she, the whole thing wouldn't run without her. <laughs> and I personally want to thank Donna because this is her first time and she put a lot of time into making sure she knew what she was doing. And she did amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. I have another joke for you. What do you get okay. when you cross a snowman with a vampire? Any guesses? Snowman with a vampire. Frostbite. But I'm bumped. What do you call Santa when he takes a break? Santa pause. What's every elf's favorite type of music? Rap. And on that note, I would say at 802, this is a wrap. And I just want to tell everybody to stay safe. Please practice radical self-care. Take care of yourselves. Enjoy precious moments and find what brings you joy because that's what it's all about. Just being in the moment and finding joy. We all need it. <laughs> Have a safe night. Good night. And thank you for joining.